All right, hey guys, so we are here in OBS. We're going to be looking at this from a Mac perspective, but if you're looking at this from a PC, it's going to be very, very similar. So uh, to start off, we're going to go to the bottom left corner here to Scenes. Scenes, uh, you can think of it as, um, basically essentially think of it as a video switcher, the one, two, three, four, all of those. Those are going to be your scenes. Now, your sources right next to that, to the right of it, that's going to be what is contained in those scenes. So it could be anything from just a pre-recorded video. It could be a live uh, video, uh, a live video stream from a camera, or it could be a, uh, for example, a web page. However, that's not to say that it can only be one of those things. The really cool thing about OBS and building out these scenes is that it can contain multiples of those. So we'll come back to that in a minute. To the right of that, you have your audio mixer. Very, very simple. Uh, think of it as just a digital audio board. You can control the levels. Um, there's a little bit extra that you can do, but it's fairly basic as far as controlling levels. You're just going to be uh, balancing the decibels. So uh, what we're really going to want to do is if we go over here uh, to the very far right, you have your start streaming, your manage broadcast, start recording, all of that stuff. But you have your settings. We're going to start with settings. This is going to be very, very huge. Uh, really what you're going to want to be doing here, um, if you're looking to record or to stream, uh, you're either looking at the output for recording or you're looking at the stream for streaming. So uh, as you can see here, we already have it connected to our BZB TV account on YouTube. Uh, that's the really great thing about this. You can make it very, very simple. You can choose which uh, service you wanna pick from. There's a bunch of them. You can hit show all, I'm not going to do that, but there's a wide range. But you can also do a custom one as well. If you wanted to punch in the RTMPS stuff uh, very, very um, manually, you could do that as well. Uh, you can also pick your server and all of that stuff. I'm not going to get very, very crazy into this, but one of the really cool things that you can actually do with OBS, as you can see here, is it gives you kind of uh, streaming service setting recommendations for each streaming service. Okay, so that's going to be where you choose what you want to actually stream to and the servers. Now, if we go back down to output, you can go ahead and set your video bit rate, what software encoding you want to use, your audio bit rate. And on top of that, you can choose a, uh, a recording path if you want to do that, if you both want to stream and record at the same time, or if you just want to record, you can also do that. Um, but you also have a lot and a lot of uh, settings here as well. And this is just the simple if I go to the advanced, you get a whole lot more uh, options that you can choose here, both from uh, streaming, recording, audio, replay. What I would recommend, though, is you just leave it on simple. Uh, you don't really need to dive too deep into this unless you're doing something very professionally. Um, but uh, one really cool thing is, too, you have your audio settings here. You have your channels, what bit rate you want to use or sample rate you want to use. So uh, 48 kilohertz, if you can do that, I would suggest that. You also can uh, enable your desktop audio, uh, your what microphone you might have, or even potentially up to four microphones if you wanted to do that. And one of the really, really cool things about OBS uh, is going to be the amount of plugins that you can use. So if you uh, actually look at our desktop audio, uh, one of the things that I have here is a Black Hole 2 channel. That's something specifically for Mac to allow you to get desktop audio. And then on top of that, if you go to mic and auxiliary, I have NDI audio as well because there are NDI tools for uh, OBS. So that's one of the beauties of it being open source and it being free. So one of the uh, one of the main things that I really want to cover here, um, and this is going to make your life a whole lot easy, we're going to actually leave the settings tool. And we're going to go all the way up here to tools. And there's an auto configuration wizard option here that we're going to pick. So if you bring this up, you can actually have OBS kind of test stuff for you and say, hey, this is what I want to do what can my network and what can my computer handle? So if you are not somebody who is super well um, versed in what kind of bit rates uh, your computer can handle or the software that you have, the hardware that you have, or even the network, you can just bring this up and it'll help you kind of configure that for you. So what I would do uh, if you're streaming, obviously, and you want to record, optimize for streaming and recording as secondary, go ahead and hit next. Uh, you can choose the canvas resolution. The canvas resolution essentially is just going to be the resolution of the window behind this. So if you look here, it's just this window here. Right now, I'm just going to leave it on 1920 by 1080. Um, and I'll also leave the FPS on either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible. That's probably going to be what most people are looking for. So you hit next. 
Uh, you can choose what service you want. Uh, we'll just leave it here and we'll hit next. So now after you've gone through all of that, it will go ahead and start executing some tests for you to get the results of what it suggests for not only your hardware, but what your network can handle as well. So it's a really cool feature that OBS uh, has that makes this a whole lot simpler. All right, and now that the uh, the results have come back, it'll tell you exactly what it has configured, what it is determining is going to be the best estimated uh, settings for you. So for example, for me right now in this room, give me uh, a video bit rate of 4,350, a streaming encoder uh, X264, um, recording quality, same as stream, base resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080, and the output what is being streamed will be then scaled down to 720p. So it looks like everything that I have is great for handling streaming uh, at a high bit at a higher bit rate out to YouTube. So you can go ahead and hit apply settings or uh, back or cancel if you don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I don't necessarily want to do that right now. But we will go ahead and start building out a scene so you get an idea of what OBS would look like. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add, uh, you get a whole bunch of different options here. So what we wanna do really is I'm going to go ahead and add a media source. So media source is going to be a few different things, um, but mostly you're really going to be using media source for stuff like um, B-roll videos or other things. So when you go ahead and name it, it'll uh, bring up this file, this window. You have a few options. You can either loop it, you can restart playback when the source becomes active, or show nothing when the playback ends. So those are just going to be a few things. You can change the speed of it, um, but I'm just gonna leave it as it, as it shows. Looping just means once it ends, it will go ahead and start all the way from the beginning. So now you just go to browse, it'll bring up the file system. We'll go ahead and bring in one of the videos that I did recently. Um, and hit OK. So now it'll go ahead and be right here. It'll start playing. I'm going to go ahead and pause that. And one of the things that you might have to do, because this is a 4K video that I chose, you're going to have to resize it a little bit. So you can resize it in any shape, uh, not any shape, but any uh, size that you would like. So we'll just bring that up to the 1080p version here. It'll play. You can see the uh, B-roll uh, audio here. You can go ahead and change that if you want it to be lower. So I'll go ahead and stop this. Uh, you get to look at my beautiful mug there. Uh, so we'll stop it right there at that frame. And let's say you wanted to bring in something else. Like let's say you wanted to also um, have a browser come up. So if you wanted to do this, we'll just title this BZB Gear. And once you add that, you can go ahead and paste a URL here. For example, if I were to go and grab a URL, which I will do right now. You can go ahead and paste it in here. You can change the width and the height of it. You can set a custom frame rate. You can do a whole bunch of other things, but let's say we'll just leave it there. Uh, it'll pop up here in a minute and boom. Now you also have, for example, a web page showing and you can change these if you wanted to. You could have a smaller video with a larger, uh, larger web page here. And the way that scenes and sources work is whatever is at the top of the sources is going to be what is showing up currently. So we'll go ahead and leave the scene like this. There's plenty of different things you can do with it, but we'll go ahead and add a second scene. So we'll just leave it as scene two. Uh, I'll go ahead and change it. We'll add an image, uh, hit OK, browse an image. So if we go to um, pictures, We'll go ahead and add this picture right here. So boom, now we have this. Um, you can also add a audio input capture. So I'll go ahead and add this and we'll have this be uh, my MacBook Pro microphone. So now you can see uh, down here in the audio mixer, it is coming up. So one of the things that you probably want to be consistent about is if, for example, you have people talking on a live stream, and scene one and scene two have the same amount of people, but their pictures are or their pictures, but their videos might be in different orientations. Um, or if scene two is a full screen of somebody, uh, but you want to have the audio of both parties uh, carry over, you're going to need to add both audio input captures um, to make sure that you don't cut off part of the conversation when switching between scenes. 
And one of the really cool things that I love about OBS, we're going to go ahead and go over to the studio mode down here. And now you have something very, very similar to what you might see in a video studio. So you have your preview on your left and your program on the right. So you have up in the middle here, you have transitions. So you can do a cut, you can do a, a wipe, um, you can do a fade, you can do a fade to black. So it, it opens up a little bit more in terms of what you can do. But this was just a really quick five minute or so explanation of OBS and how to get it set up and running. So hopefully uh, this is helpful and we'll see you guys next time.